Blessings, everyone. It's Pastor Tony. Thank you for tuning in. I'm praying that you've had a blessed week and that is only going to get even better. Today we're reading on the book of Luke chapter 7. We're going to pick up in verse 11, Luke 7, 11, okay? And that's, uh, we're reading from the New King James Version. And we'll pick this right up. It says here in verse 11, Now it happened the day after that he went into, this, into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. So he has all his disciples. Remember at one point we got 70 that we know about that were following with him in addition to the 12, okay? And, and a large crowd. So there's a lot of people following Jesus. And Nain, you know, uh, last week we were looking at Capernaum. And if you look at a map of uh, old Jerusalem, old, I'm sorry, old Israel, you see uh, um, Nain is south, um, really kind of southwest, if you would, of, of uh, Capernaum. And so you see Jesus traveling here and he has a whole crew with him. Verse 12. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. I need you to think about that for a moment. It's one thing to lose your husband, your spouse. Uh, then you lose your son. In my opinion, you know, as a pastor, you know, a few times we've had to bury children. And that is ultimately one of the most devastating experiences I've ever had. Um, it, it really is to be there with the parents and, and to um, console them. And uh, it, it's very difficult. And so when I read this about this lady here, this widow and losing her husband and only losing her son. And it says here, and a large crowd from the city was with her. Now, I need to get a visual on this, okay? So you have to, uh, the, the, the people are coming outside the city, and there's a large crowd, a large funeral procession. Procession. Here comes Jesus, okay? Got all of his disciples, got his main guys. And also got this crowd you know, with him. This is a lot of people, okay? Verse 13, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said, do not weep. Now, last week I was talking about having faith. Now, here's the thing. Jesus comes and he says, do not weep. I talked about how the word of God can be offensive, okay? What do you mean, Jesus, don't weep? Uh, my, my heart is broken, you know? I, I lost my husband, you know, and, and now here's my son. Now, me personally, I don't know the time span in between, but uh, I, I'm sure it was difficult. You know, I, I, I know it was hard for her either way. And, he's, and Jesus is saying, do not weep, you know. Uh, it reminds me of when Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. And, and uh, they came and said, uh, hey, Jairus, your daughter, you know, don't, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your, your daughter's dead. And Jesus told him, don't fear, don't fear. It's like, what do you mean don't fear? I just got this devastating news. And you see here, Jesus is saying, do not weep. And this is where faith really has to come in, okay? Verse 14 then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise, arise. So he touched, stops the funeral perception, procession, interrupts everything, and he says, arise. Verse 15, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Now, I think about my life. And I think about your life. There are so many times when it seems like whatever we were believing God for or whatever promise we received or whatever was going good, all of a sudden it comes to an end. I don't know how the young man died, but let's say he died a slow death. Let's say he was sick. And I'm sure his mother was probably praying, healed him, healed him, healed him. And he wasn't healed. He died. Or maybe it was a sudden death, which is tragic also, you know, and she's distraught. What am I going to do now? You know, because the culture at that time dictated that the son was going to take care of, the son was, was supposed to take care of his mother. And she's probably wondering now, what am I going to do? You know, the beautiful thing about living here in America, and um, I am, um, I, I think we need a welfare system in place. Now, there are people that take advantage of it, and, and they're, they're, uh, that's, that's wrong. Uh, and I, I'm a proponent of, you know, if you're able to work, get up and go to work, okay? But there are times when we really need to tend to people. Not everybody is able. First Thessalonians 5, 14 talks about the feeble minded and some people are just troubled. OK, and we as a community, we need to rally around them and love them and support them. There is that. But now we have this widow woman here. I don't know her full situation, but at that time they didn't have a typical welfare system like we do now. And so maybe there are other family members that could have cared for her. 
and I'm relating this to your situation. Maybe you have a dream or something that was very important to you. You know, maybe it could have been a job and you lose your job and you don't know what you're going to do. Maybe your husband got laid off, uh, you know, a year or two ago and he hasn't found employment yet. You know, as of today, you know, the economy is good here in America. And, and um, maybe, you know, it's good for everybody else, but it's not good for you guys right now. But I want you to know that this procession, you know, you think life is over. Jesus can come and stop the death of whatever your dream is. And he can resurrect that and you can get your hope back. You can believe again. You know, brothers and sisters, um, my wife and I, we've lost homes, homes, plural, <laughs> plural. Um, I lost two homes before I was 30 years old. And I know what it's like to lose. I know what it's like to have an auto, um, uh, the tow truck come and hook up your car in front of all your neighbors and take it away. And nothing was wrong in my car other than I hadn't paid for it. I understand that. I understand going into a bank and applying and being turned down. I do understand that. But here's the thing. I know what it's like to, to release my faith, to believe again and hope again and watch God move again on my behalf. And just God, the Bible says he's no respect of persons. And just like he did it for me, he'll do it for you. So this young woman, this lady here, I'm sorry, this young man rose up and verse 16 says, then fear came upon all and they glorified God saying, a great prophet has risen up among us and God has visited his people. 17, and this report about him went throughout all Judea and the surrounding region. Now, I want, this is what I want, want you to see. So this lady had this devastating event. Okay, I need you to see this. And she's walking, okay, in the funeral procession on the way to the cemetery, most likely. And here comes Jesus. And it's a divine intersection. Payal. He stops. He puts his hand on a coffin, stops the funeral, tells the young man to get up. Now, everyone sees. So sometimes through your misery, people are going to be blessed. You think it's over, but I see the big picture here. That now in verse 17 says, and this report about him went throughout all Judea and the surrounding region. So maybe through your difficulty that you're experiencing right now, God is going to get a, a just get a lot of glory. People are going to hear. People are going to hear and believe. If you'd have told me at the time when we were going through all we went through and we lost everything we lost, that there would be a day when I would be sitting here doing a Bible study and literally people from all over the world would be watching. My wife and I, we have churches. We have our church here that we oversee. We have churches here in our state that we oversee, here in our country that we oversee. We have um, in South America, Asia, and in Africa. We have missionaries that we support all over the world. Uh, as of this taping, we've taken teams to Israel. We, we've taken, uh, either we've led or sent, I think it's, oh, right about 58 teams to different parts of the world to minister the word of God. If you'd have told me that, when I was having a difficulty that I would be here today, it would very, be very hard to believe. I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, you might have suffered great loss, but it doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean it's over. So get your hope back. Get your faith back. Trust in God like you've never trusted before. And this is what it means to, be, to walk by faith and not by sight. To trust in God and lean not to your own understanding. Then know that God is, is here. He loves you. He cares for you. And often it doesn't look like we want it to look. But I've learned something. To submit myself to his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And trust God. Allow him to get the glory. Allow him to get the glory. You just keep believing no matter what is transpiring. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. See you next week.